Hey guys, this is the YouTube version uh, of my show. I don't love the idea of even putting it out like this, but I'm going to use YouTube to stay in touch with you guys from now on. That means this version is missing all the stories about coronavirus, insurrection, your Second Amendment rights, and more. All of these, of course, are usually my most honest, brutal, and important stories. Anyway, you can uh, get the entire unfiltered and uncensored show for free by going to thecomicsgym.com or nickdip.com. It's still free on both of these sites, too. Uh, and if you want extra content each day, join at patreon.com or thecomicsgym.com for the daily Encore show. Also, while you're uh, on these sites, please make a contribution to keep this show free and check out my tour dates. I'll be in Phoenix, uh, Raleigh, New York, and Texas in the up and coming months. Remember, uh, you guys keep thinking it, I'll keep saying it, and please enjoy and please share today's episode. Talk to you soon. I am so sick and tired of the liberal agenda that is destroying our country from our schools to our workplaces to our media. It's literally everywhere. Well, everywhere maybe, but not this show. Never. Here you get the truth, unfiltered and unapologetic. I don't care if I hurt feelings or if I take a position that isn't agreeable or if I step on somebody's toes. I call them the way I see them and then I put it out there for free. To keep this show free, I need your help. Please go to nickdip.com and make a contribution, or even better, subscribe at thecomicsgym.com or on Patreon today and get an extra encore show each day. Discounts are on merchandise and a whole lot more. Thank you guys so much for watching, sharing, and contributing to the best show, in my opinion, on the internet and the most honest. You guys make it happen. Oh yeah, how are you folks? Welcome to the show on a dirty, filthy Tuesday. What's happening? Uh, Russia's making a move, who gives a shit? I'm 60, I don't give a rat's ass if they're living next to me. Anyways. <laughs> uh, what else? That's it. Good seeing you, see you tomorrow. You think it, somebody else can say it. In the uh, N-word tonight, I don't know. I'm just going to read what I just read. Hey, Uber, somebody explain Uber to me because uh, I just read a story. I, I have a bit about it five years ago, how there's always sexual assaults on Uber. Uh, who's vetting these people? Uh, Biden's, Biden's uh, you know, Border Patrol. Uh, this is ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, I'm always reading about sexual assaults, and I have this whole bit about if you're a fat girl on a Saturday night, you can't get a day call Uber, you know? You wake up in your sister's driveway with your skirt over your head. And the Jamaican going, that'd be five dollar. Anyways, I just read a pregnant woman gets shot by her Uber driver, right? Then another blonde girl, like on a Saturday, goes out with her friends and takes an Uber to back to her apartment, and uh, she's missing. So don't take Uber, I guess all I'm trying to say. No. And the, no, here's the other thing. My personal experience with Uber. Uh, I signed up, and there was something wrong. My credit card expired, so they still have the old one. Anyways, I've taken three Ubers in my life, and on the third, only three. And on the third one, I was in Dallas. A young kid picks me up. I can smell weed in the car. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Fuck, he misses my exit, misses the road. He gets back on the highway again, drifts into a Mercedes passing us on the right at about 80. Drifts into him, touches him. I go, dude, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, I don't know what my point is. I know you all fucking use Uber and shit. Try the Lyft or one of the other ones, but Jesus Christ. 
<laughs> Enough of the pussy footing around. Yeah, Russia's uh, going into Ukraine. We knew that. Blah, 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 blah. And uh, what are we going to do about Sanctions. We'll hit them in the wallet. <laughs> they don't give a shit. The headline, fools rush in. Nick, you're so clever. Um, get it? Rush in? <laughs> God, help me. Russia orders troops into eastern Ukraine as fear of war grows. And uh, the people of Ukraine are like, fuck you. I'm staying right here. <laughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin said, pass remote control. Raise the specter of war on Monday. <laughs> Raise the specter by ordering troops into separatist areas of eastern Ukraine in his most dangerous provocation. Yet with the Washington over the fate of a nation that could redraw the map of eastern Europe and upset the decades-long security architecture on the continent. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 No, 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 no. Let him go. Let him go. No fucking time. No fucking way. No fucking way. No fucking way. No fucking way, mate. That was Boris Johnson weighing it. Um, and again, I've given my thoughts on this, and um, it really was the part of the Soviet. I don't give a rat's ass, but stupid Biden fucking shuts off our pipeline here so we can rely on, ay, 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 just a horse's patoot. Who cares? Honestly, I said it before. What if, what if Putin said, okay, I'm, I'm planting missiles or whatever in Mexico? Because NATO, he doesn't want fucking Ukraine as part of NATO. Especially if he thinks it's his uh, old Soviet Union. This guy's old school KGB. And, uh, but um, you know what I mean? How we feel if Russia was saying, I'm not trying to defend what he's doing, but I'm just saying, are you going to waste more American treasure, lives, and billions of dollars and shit? No. I just want to hear what these sanctions are. What are you going to do? Raise the price of fucking angel hair pasta? What? A, what? A, I guess energy. I don't know. I, I, I'm not pretending to know. I, I, I just, looking at the macro, I don't really think it's worth us risking all this horse shit. Let him have fucking stinky. He's going into the break-off uh, re rebel places. That's the big story today. Uh, because uh, yesterday, Biden said, yeah, he, they were sort of hedging that Russia's invading. But then Russia announced that they're going to go after these rebel breakaway. And that's when Biden said, oh, now we can call it a, a true invasion. They have no idea what they're fucking doing. Ay, 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 ay. Uh, the move to send soldiers to carry out peacekeeping functions has further inflamed animosities with European capitals. That's the only thing. If it, if it could affect all of Europe, I, I guess. I don't know. How. It comes amid uh, escalate. Isn't that what NATO is there for? So what are you worried about? Oh, it doesn't really work? Okay. When somebody calls you bluff, like this psycho. Uh, anyways, it comes as escalating fears that Putin will order a full on invasion in Ukraine, a scenario that could ignite fighting uh, rep uh, reminiscent of World War II or stop at the borders of the uh, separatist enclaves, which make up roughly a third of eastern Ukraine region known as uh, the Donbass. Putin's action drew swift rebuke in condemnation from the international community. How many times have we heard this song? Then do something about it. Quit your fucking whining. He's calling you bluff. President Biden, just don't br uh, involve America. We've done enough. Send the rest of the NATO. Uh, President Biden and the European Union announced economic sanctions aimed at cutting trade. Whoa, we're going to cut off their moccasins. Uh, and business uh, with, uh, with and businesses with enclave. The UN Security Council met in an emergency session Monday night. It appeared by day's end, though, the diplomacy was failing, and the region was veering uh, inexorably toward a conflict uh, that could lead to mass casualties and tens of thousands of refugees. Really? Well, Joe Biden's in a... We'll continue to pursue diplomacy until the tanks roll. We are under no illusions about what is likely to come next, said a senior Biden administration. You know what's scary? He can call somebody <laughs> senior, you know, in, re in relations to Biden. 
His 141-year-old uh, administration here, the official portrayed Putin's comments in stark terms. This was a speech to the Russian people to justify a war. This is Potemkin politics. President Putin in his, is accelerating the very conflict he's creating. The announcement of the troop deployment came shortly after Putin recognized the independence of the breakaway uh, Donetsk and the uh, Lahan. I hate these fucking Russian names. <laughs> Lahansk. I used to do a bit, people go... Um, should I get my news from your show? I go, let's put it this way. If I'm doing a story and uh, I read it first and there's three Russian words I can't pronounce, I'm going to do this story about the cat dialing 911 during a house fight. <laughs> Uh, Luhansk People Republic in eastern Ukraine, Russian social media accounts, including the channel associated with Breakaway Republics on the Telegram. This is way too long, Tommy. Uh, Telegram messaging app uploaded video purporting to show a convoy, presumably Russian armored vehicles, entering areas under separatist control. The Times could not independently verify the fucking videos. What exactly right. leads you to believe the Soviets were involved? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, Joseph Burrell, the European Union's top diplomat, said Tuesday that Russian troops are on Ukrainian soil, but it was not yet a fully-fledged invasion. <laughs> okay. I don't know. Do you guys know that uh, Zelensky, I think, is the president, right, of Ukraine? Do you know he was a stand-up comedian before? Seriously. That was, he was a comic before becoming president. That means I have a shot. Hi, I'm Mike Lindell. Jesus Christ, am I tired of him. How much fucking advertising money does he have? Ming. Let's move on. Oh, more Russian horse shit. <laughs> he, oh, here's, yeah, this is, this is sort of an add-on to this story. I saw this last night. There's a Russian guy, we'll show him, uh, who announced back in December, told us the very date, day, month, that they were going to do this Ukraine thing. Who needs CIA intelligence when you have Vladimir Zerinovsky? Zerimsky. Fucking Vladdy Z. <laughs> Look, he's the Roddy Dangerfield of Moscow. Ooh, I'll tell you, though, those Ukrainians got to respect him. <laughs> uh, anyways, told us the exact date and time that Russia would begin operations in Ukraine. Speaking on December 27th, Russian ultra-nationalist Vladimir Z told the whole world uh, what was about to happen, but no one was listening, which I don't believe. Are you going to tell me he could say this? I know uh, CIA is probably, listen, it's what I said yesterday. Everybody's in on it. It's a big play. Let's just play along. Uh, at 4 a.m. on February 22nd, you will feel our new policy. That's a quote from Vladimir Z. Back in December. February 22nd was when? Yesterday? Yep. Yeah. When did they fucking go in? Early that yep. Monday night? Early Tuesday morning? CFP ran this uh, through a Russian uh, to English translator, and it checked out. Here's him saying it in a beautiful language. Отказывайтесь, тогда мы можем принять другую программу. А какую вы почувствуете? 4 часа утра 22 февраля. Я бы хотел, чтобы 22 год был бы годом мирным, но я люблю правду. 75 лет говорю... Uh, he's talking about a waitress with big tits. He's pissed. He said no pickles on his sandwich. That... Uh, anyways, they put that through a Russian-English translator. That's... Seriously, that's the speech where he announced it. And the, it checked out with the translator. Also, it was shared by a White House pool reporter, so it appears to be legitimate. <laughs> oh, that dirty cocksucker. That says a lot for our fucking intelligence community. That's what I'm saying. Who do you believe? What do you believe? Huh? Somebody help. I just wanted to be a tap dancer as a kid. Suck a little dick. You know what I mean, what? 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 <laughs> Anyways. Uh, <laughs> Ugh. Comrade, here is something that might be of interest to you. A transcript of the conversation between your helicopter... Between C-SPAN and Joe Biden. We 
Intercept. Dragonfly wolf den. <laughs> Colorful names. Here we are. Here we are. We have the Ukraine inside. will be in tomorrow. The reply, abort, abort the operation, operation immediately. immediately. Which is what uh, Biden's hoping Putin will do. But he ain't, man. He's KGB old school. Uh, I wonder how Trump would handle it. Hey, Vlad, Vlad, what are you doing? Come on, we know your economy's the size of Texas. We'll fucking, we got more nukes. What are you thinking? That's what he, Biden's fucking shit in his pants. Ugh. Just the facts, man. I just gave you the facts. Uh, anyways, uh, if you haven't already, please take a moment and sign up at thecomicsgym.com to get my exclusive encore show. Today I'll be talking about more insanity as an Uber driver shoots a pregnant woman. The fuck's the world coming to? Anyway, I'll get into that in the encore presentation. To get access, just click on any of the encore episodes and sign up at the Sunny, Michael, or Vito levels. You'll also get discounts off Nick DiPaolo Show merchandise. And starting this Thursday, you'll get access to a voicemail line where you can leave a question or a thought. I'll play it and address it on the show. Um, we're trying this again. Why? Tom, what are you doing? Again, you can only get uh, this as a member on thecomicsgym.com. So if you haven't already signed up there, please do so. This is without a doubt the best way you can support this show. That and hand jobs in a parking lot behind Target and uh, Garden City. <laughs> Town smells like a corpse. <laughs> Let's get on to some more um, kind of military uh, leaders that are out of control, that are, I mean, uh, high on power. Let's talk about this um, cum guzzler, Trudeau. He is as gay as this necktie. <laughs> Tr <laughs> it's actually a nice tie. Uh, Trudeau, the gay tyrant. The Canadian Parliament voted Monday night, listen to this, to approve Prime Minister Justin Gobble Gobble Goo Trudeau's motion to invoke the Emergencies Act by a vote of 185 to 151 uh, against. So, in other words, he wants to make this like... No, I, I can't, I can't. Fucking quiz! Just like my buddy said uh, when all this shit started. I mean, he said it to me a couple of years ago. Um, when you start to see black trucks, like the marathon bombing, you see black truck with no markings on them. It's, it's federal. It's, and then when they're talking about, like, even during the riots, bringing in, this is how it starts. You bring in the National Guard. Then you get used to it. Next thing you know, it's martial law. It's all conditioning. It's all conditioning. Exactly right. Monarch, it's called monarch conditioning. He, uh, so it's like getting bone in the ass with no, yeah, no loop. Nice and slow. Just put the tip in. Next thing you know, next thing you know, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I can't um, but that's how it, you know, this guy, and again, nobody, nobody, not to put any ideas in anybody's head, but I'm just saying, famous politicians have got whacked for weight less. No, I, I'm not saying. Look, folks, I enjoy hockey. Anyways, <laughs> Trudeau invoked the act in unprecedented move last week, claiming it necessary to dispel peaceful protests linked to the Freedom Convoy movement, which is demanding an end to civil rights violations by the Trudeau government, allegedly necessary to fight the <laughs> which was a perfect pretext to bring in your fucking Marxist rule. At press time on Monday, no active freedom convoy protest exists anywhere in Canada. I didn't know that. All of them shut down? Let's go to the goddamn videotape. Emergencies Act will be used to strengthen and support law enforcement agencies at all agencies. levels across the country. This is about keeping this Canadians safe, protecting people's jobs. Pause. It's always about security, safety, always. That's what they do, and it's good for you. We know what's good. Don't fucking believe any of it. And don't think it's not coming here, folks. Anyways, any more left of that? Go ahead. And restoring confidence in our institutions. 
We're entering the third week of illegal blockades that have been disrupting the lives of too many Canadians. Here in our capital city, families and small businesses have been enduring illegal obstruction of their neighbourhoods. Occupying streets, harassing people, breaking the law. This is not a peaceful protest. What a fucking faggot. What a fucking power hungry. He's just Pelosi with a dick. Got more respect for Pelosi. What a fucking jerk off. You notice how he doesn't even bring up the other side's argument? You know what I mean? He doesn't even address it. That's how fucking arrogant. Now, I understand that these mandates have caused hard. Doesn't even address it. I, he just he want to crush the little people. Let's get on with this global thing. That's all it is. He can't wait to get on with the global. He can't wait till the United States gets on board. That's why we have to elect. He's a little old, but I think the next 2020, Bob Barker, he's still kicking. <laughs> <He'll never die>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just shit my pants. <laughs> You know, he was banging all those models when he was the, I mean, the third his age. Seriously, I read a whole thing about it. God bless Bobby Barker, that's what I got to say. The motion to uphold the invocation of emergency powers by Trudeau passed in a vote in the Canadian House of, uh, House of uh, Molson with the half the Canadians, two left wingers and a defenseman say yay. Uh, anyways, a uh, vote in the Canadian House of Commons on Monday with the Liberal Party and the NDP and other allies garnering 181 votes for the motion. Can you imagine? That's faggot stuff. It is for Canada. You want to call it by its name? That's strictly for fags. <laughs> the motion was opposed by the Conservative Party of Canada, CPC, and the separatist bloc, Quebec, BQ, Dairy Queen and uh, their allies who voted against it with 151 votes, uh, the CBC reported. Uh, the passing of the measure in the House of Commons is the first step towards confirming the use of the act, which allows the government significant powers. The Emergencies Act was invoked for the first time in Canadian history to stop this freedom convoy. What does that tell you? Across the country, which included blockages of border crossings in Ontario, Manitoba, Manitoba, Alberta. I've been to all those cities, by the way. Man, I vibe around the fucking globe. Uh, although all of the border blockades ended before the Emergencies Act was formally invoked last week. Instead, the act was largely, largely used, this is going to piss you off, to clear protests in Canada's capital, Ottawa, over the weekend, and was used to freeze the bank account of those linked to the protest. In other words, if you sent money, even if you're a fucking American, if you sent money, they were looking into everybody. If you, if you, oh man, this is, this is pure fascism. We disagree with your politics. We're shutting you down. It's going to get ugly, man. It, it, I, how can it get ugly? Uh, anyways, shut down bank accounts, uh, those linked to the protest. It was also used to force tow truck companies. Can you imagine you own a tow truck company? You're a blue collar stiff who believes in what these guys, and you got to go tow trucks? I saw a guy on TV last night. They shut down his company. He doesn't know where his tow truck is. And they shut down another company he has that has nothing to do with this. Oh my God. It, it's coming here. It's really fucking China. This is how they run shit. Used to force tow truck companies to remove trucks in Ottawa, occupying the area around the parliament buildings after the government had uh, trouble hiring tow trucker, uh, truckers previously, as many allegedly refused. Like I said, they're blue collar. They don't want mandate. People forget what it's about. Once again, forcing fucking you a communist? Yeah, I do. Huh? Huh? How do you like it? How do you like it? Justin tricked out the fag. He tell you what to eat, what to think, how to bank. Do you want to be like a cheap? Huh? Do you want to be like a cheap? Ah, 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 ah. <laughs> Get this son of a bitch out of here. Take him to Freedom Town. Anyways, uh, early in the day on Monday, Minister Trudeau defended his continued use of the Emergencies Act, even though everything's quiet, despite the fact all the protests had been cleared. 
or had ended prior to his uh, invocation. Here he is uh, saying why. I bought you to eigen Arbeit, to eigen Fleisch, eigen Entschlossenheit. That was him saying, I think hockey's barbaric. People get their teeth knocked out, which isn't bad when you're blowing somebody like myself tonight. But that's not the point. I think I'm a powerful fella. This guy was a theater major. Fucking. Ugh. <laughs> Canada's like a macho. The guys, you know, they hunt and fish and kind of redneckish. I like them. Anyways. He says, this state of emergency is not over. There continue to be real concerns about the coming days, Trudeau said, and added, people, see, they think they're coming back, which I hope they do. People are out there indicating that they are ready to blockade to continue their illegal occupation to disrupt. Okay, how about you? <laughs> Again, touch on why they're doing this. Ah. Uh, we feel that this measure needs to remain in place. Do you really? Is that what you feel? Who said that? Who the fuck said that? Trudeau. Oh, a slimy little comment of shit twinkle toe Trudeau. sucker down here who we'll just signed his own death war. That's a perfect description. <laughs> what? What did he say? Uh, I can't even remember. God, I got no sleep left. Twinkle toe cocksucker. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, God bless that guy. He's dead, too. I know. Uh, mama's son. Oh, I killed Bob Beckel. I've been known to kill people. <laughs> Honestly, I, Joe List, I was doing, I've told the story on the show before. We were doing a gig years ago uh, down in Florida, one nighter. They try to rip us off. They close the place like the next day. Anyways, I said, uh, for some reason, that Billy Mays, remember the guy with the, what, what did he used to push? Ox, thank you. <laughs> so I'm on stage, and for some reason I saw that commercial eight times. Eight, huh? I go, I, I hope that mother fucking dies in his sleep, just like that. <laughs> I wake up the next day, there's 150 emails from people from the show. Oh, Joe List, I look at Joe List text, he said, you killed Billy Mays. <laughs> fucking, and I did it to somebody else. Not even a year after that. My wife goes, what are you doing? And I go, I don't know. What am I doing? I'm going to talk about you only. Um, and then so a couple nights ago, I said to my wife, do you remember that drunk guy? He was kind of a curmudgeon, but he was kind of funny. He was a little mean. And we're trying to think of his name. And I, I went, Bob Beckel. Bob Be so fucking wake up yesterday to find out Bob Beckel was dead. So who should I talk about tonight? Pelosi with my wife? Anyhow, uh, let's, let's move on. Here's a story for you. Here's where we are in, as a country, a society. And uh, can I just say this? It's on my head. Slavery's the worst thing we ever did for everybody involved, period. That's all I'm going to say. For black people, for, for this country, worst thing ever. You know what I'm saying. A four-year-old child fired a gun at a police officer. A police officer. I'll say that again. You guys probably weren't paying attention. Four-year-old child fires a gun at police officers on instruction from his father during a dispute over a food order at McDonald's drive-thru in Utah on Monday. Now, the shocking part of the story for me wasn't that he was four years old. It's that he was, had a father. <laughs> Who's with me? Come on. I'm loving it. Bang. That was in Utah on uh, Monday. I don't even know if it's a black. It's probably a fucking one. Uh, Utah, there are not many black people in Utah. Could have been a white fella. I don't want to be racist. I could, what, get kicked off the fucking internet? <laughs> the shooting took place at Mickey D's in Midvale. I've been there. Delicious quarter pound of a cheese. They do it differently. They make it with turkey. Uh, just outside of Salt Lake City, that's where it was, when a man flashed a gun. <laughs> how, the only reason I'm guessing black, is, that's not the picture of the guy, right? No. No. Um, because I've read a thousand of these. 
where there's a fast food gun incident. And it's mostly, not all the time. You got those rednecks in Florida once in a while. That would, but, you know, nine out of ten times. So let's cut this shit. I, I know I'm going to be wrong because it's Salt Lake City. But here's the other point. Why don't you tell me what the fucking race is? Oh, that usually is a giveaway. But I don't want to be racist. I don't want to ruin my career or what's left of it. Uh, when a man flashed a gun at the fast food workers, like, you know, during an argument about his order, because, you know, you should take somebody's life if you don't get ketchup when you ask for uh, According to Unified Police Department of Greater Salt Lake, the adult male with two children in the back seat, just two, so they ain't Mexican, pulled over and waited for workers to fix his order. But instead, the employees called the police because the guy flashed a gun. Officers ar arrived and were able to remove the man who was being uncooperative, black, uh, from the vehicle, okay? I'm just telling you straight up. If that's a fact. It is. Tell me, am I lying? While he was being apprehended, police said the dad instructed the child who was still in the vehicle to shoot the officers. Cops said they saw a small arm. <laughs> is this, are we, I don't know. The news has been frightening for the last, I don't know, year. <laughs> Saw a small arm in hand, of course. They have to say in, no, it's a small arm with a giant hand on it. <laughs> and a gun appear from inside the vehicle door. Don't you move, you motherfucker, I'll blow your brains out. The kid replied, Kappa tata paka. <laughs> This is called an unhappy meal, by the way. A police officer hit the gun. Oh my, the fucking kid shot the gun. Wow, he, hmm. This kid will be the fucking, he'll be leading up the, the Crips when he's in second grade. A police officer hit the gun. Come out, he actually fired it, forcing the bullet upwards where it hit an awning, the restaurant awning. I say give this kid the chair, the booster chair. Good night, everybody. Good to be here at Yuck Yuck, you fuck stains. The man whose identity was not immediately released by law enforcement, we'll call him Tyrone Williamson was taken into custody. Officials have not announced what charges as of my... Why is everything a secret today? Anybody notice that? In general, reading, they won't tell you why the guy, how the guy died, haven't released this, haven't released... Why is everybody a fuck it? Everything a secret? And I'm not imagining it. I have great instincts. <sighs> I gotta blow some steam. You know what's a good way to blow steam off? Go on the road and you fucking get on stage and tell some jokes and... Get Finger popped a fat coat girl. That was when I was single. I can't believe it's almost March, ladies and gentlemen. That means I'm back on the road next month. You can find all these tour dates and ticket links on my website at nickadip.com. Here's what's on sale currently. I have a pair of leather shoes that I wore in fifth grade. I, March 25th, Hyenas Comedy Club in Dallas. The next night, the 26th, another Hyenas Club in Fort Worth. Wow, they're right next to each other, aren't they? April 7, 8, and 9, Comics at Mohegan Sun. That would be a casino, and they're a lot of snatch. May 6th, Governor's Comedy Club in Levittown. May 7th, at the Paramount Theater in Peachgill, New York. September 9th, Soul Joel's Comedy Club. That's a good one. It's outside, like under a tent, like 500 people. Uh, in Roy Royersford, Pennsylvania. September 10th, Algonquin a Theater in Manasquan, New Jersey. And September 11th, the Sugarloaf Performing Arts Center in Chester, New York. Again, you can get all the links for tickets at nickdip.com. Click on the tour button. And click on the merchandise and pick up a Nick DiPaolo IUD. Good night. Red looks nice. Looks nice, don't he, Jack? It's a line of the Raging Bull. <sighs> political propaganda. Dallas, what is political? It's a, I, I, based on this story, I guess it's a far left uh, publication. See, I was wondering that too because some years ago it didn't seem like it was. Yeah, that. It so seemed, it seemed like it became that. Yeah, like everything else, you notice. Politico argued. Listen to this one, man. I think they're just trolling us with shit like this. This can't be Politico, which a lot of people read. I've heard fucking Tucker Carlson quote it. It's got a clever flag there. That's terrific. <laughs> Politico argued on Monday that President's Day should be canceled 
You know why? Can anybody? For including former President Donald Trump in the holiday. Can we just go? Can we just drop? Look at look at what are you talking about? That was the best ever. Matter of fact, I should have a Trump week. <laughs> Call it President Trump week. Fuck President's Day. <laughs> Who wants a mattress sale to celebrate that? In an article titled, It's Time to Cancel President's Day, the publication made the case that President's Day is not woke enough and that it uh, does a dis listen to this, does a disservice to history and is uh, less a show of genuine respect for American history than an insult to it, whatever the fuck that means. <sighs> More specifically, the article suggests President's Day is irrelevant. Let me guess, they're going to bring race into it? It's irrelevant because the holiday takes into account Donald Trump's presidency, that's in quotes, while discounts... The racial reckoning spurred by George Floyd's murder. So it one isolated, and it is isolated, you fucks, don't it? Ugh, systemic. By a scumbag drug dealer who once held a gun to a pregnant woman's stomach. We should get rid of something that's a, a president's day. Because it wasn't acknowledged? Are you dog styling me? They get, they're going to have a statue of him? If anything, it's just the opposite. They overplayed it, which allegedly caused widespread awakening. Oh, is that what it would be in woke is? Of <laughs> widespread awakening of interest in the American past. That's a nice way of putting we burnt down cities and you burnt and fucking billion dollars worth of damage. 30 to 40 people died. The awakening of interest. That's how they put it. Attempting to solve a problem that does not exist, Politico tries to resolve the conflict of President's Day by simply canceling it. The presidency itself, like so many aspects of American culture, is now in the middle of ideological crossfire. It's a, again, that's innocuous language. Uh, in the middle of crossfire, they're trying to eliminate our history between left and right. That's another way of saying both sides do it. You muddle it. Is there a way that the center can find its voice in arguments about the presidency? Yes, there is. A good way to start would be to cancel the day we mark today, President's Day. What? Problem. You're the fucking problem. You fucking Dr. White, onking, jam rag, arkin, spunk bubble, I'm telling you, H. You keep looking at me, I'm going to put you in the fucking ground, I promise you. Not this time. Do you understand that's what ISIS and terrorist groups, when they take over, right? I know there's a word for it, I forget, when you tear down all the idols and um, heretics. I don't know. Uh, that's, what, that's what ISIS did, destroying, remember, all those super old stuff? You know, well, they destroyed Aleppo, an ancient city uh, that represented everything in Syria. Aleppo! That's right. Aleppo. That was my screen name when I used to try to pick up Cub Scouts. And Aleppo, that's right. Don't ever play Dallas in Jeopardy when it comes to war. Uh, the name suggests we honor Lincoln in Washington no less than Richard Nixon or Warren G. Harding or Donald Trump. Yeah, what are you fucking lumping Biden? I'm going to come to your office. Watch your back, faggots. In its conclusion, Politico, uh, Politico assesses we should keep a day... Off to reflect, oh, we should keep a day off. You mean take a day off to reflect the lessons of the American past, such as George Floyd's murder? They're just obsessed. That's all they got is race, real history, and ignore the holiday that includes Trump's presidency, which is mythological history. What? What? Excuse me? I can't wait till the guns stop flying. Dallas, I can't take it no more. An invitation to arrogance and complacency. Trump's presidency was an invitation to arrogance and complacency. Yeah, you didn't say that about George W. Bush. You didn't say it about Reagan. You didn't say it about any fucking, every Republican president that's ever been in office you guys shit on. 
And by the way, that history of systemic racism, you were the party of fucking slavery and Jim Crow. Don't ever forget it. I can't take it. Well, let's throw it to Bill with weather. <laughs> Dallas, do you watch the local NBC affiliate here in Savannah? The news at like 5 o'clock? I don't watch them directly. I just watch read articles on <laughs> apps. <laughs> You're better up. My point being, and I, and I can't believe this, I have yet to see a straight person. I, I'm not make guys, I'm not kidding. I, 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 the, the, the black woman anchor, and she looks like Scottie Pippen, but... She seems straight. Every guy that works there, super gay. I'm just saying, well, Nick, why is that? But why? Because I got to believe there's some straight reporters that could have. I got to believe they were discriminating. I know whoever was hiring was super gay. It's unbelievable. They've, this white guy's got hands like a bitch. He throws it to some guy who's gayer than he is. <laughs> then he'll toss it to another guy in a dress. It's fucking un... I, I, just, my, I had my wife crying, laughing. I go, what's this? I actually recorded it. And I'm fast forward. I can't find a straight guy on the news. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I'm just saying. When well, the I w- fact that that even passes as journalism or what we just read. like, <laughs> I know. I don't... Must be an op-ed piece. I don't know. I don't care anymore. Is this the final story? Here's one for you. Black face babies. What does that mean? A daycare teacher in Massachusetts, surprise, surprise, my home state, uh, has been fired after she made young children wear black face masks. I'm talking really young children for Black History Month. And the daycare has temporarily shut down out of fear of protest. Look, of course, a white teacher, I'm guessing, right? I believe it's a white broad. Karen, what, why? Now, this is how screwed up we are about race. She she's actually thinks she's doing good. You know what I mean? She thinks she's doing good. It's come so, it's so fucked up that she's being, she's getting in trouble for being PC. <laughs> you know what I mean? For PC, wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the black, <laughs> look at the fucking, those faces offend me for Christ's sake. We reached out to one of the um, kids' mothers, and she said this. What folks says about this family, I do. That's I a white woman from you, Newton, Mass. That she can always tell a lady but the way that she <laughs> eat in front of folks like a bird. And I ain't aiming for you to go to Mr. John Wilkinson's and eat like a field hand and gobble like a hog. <laughs> <laughs> What's funny is, if those paper plates, that's what they are, aren't racist enough, they serve fried chicken and watermelon to the kids on the black faces. <laughs> What is go- Let's take a look. A preschool teacher helping a group of toddlers make preschool paper plates teacher. into blackface masks, widely considered an offensive and racist stereotype that essentially mocks the African American experience. And for people to claim ignorance, I, I think it's unacceptable in 2022. Uh, do you? Who cares what you fucking think? How about that, Bridget? Okay. Even if you didn't feel that way, you'd have to say it because your neighborhood would beat the fuck out of you if they saw you in the news saying, eh, no biggie. I'm not defending. The teacher, this, if there was any, if, if a black person could, for once, when it comes to race, be objective, there's like three in the world, you know, Clarence Thomas, if you, and if she would say, I don't think the teacher was doing it to mock my race. You know what I mean? I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. Nah, it can't be. Nah, that ignorance ain't no different. Than that. Yeah, no, she's doing it to make fun of your race. You stupid batch. Both of you. Now, I want one of those plates. We'll be selling them at Nick Dip. <laughs> Anyways, I see kids at Montessori daycare in Newton, which is fluffy. Well, one part of Newton's really rich and posted an apology letter on its front door after it got attention on social media when a teacher had kids make blackface math to learn about black history. Why don't we get rid of Black History Month? That'll stop a lot of fucking arguing. Uh, one mother, Nadira Pierce, picked up her children at the school and learned what happened. She complained, pulled her kids out of the school, and wrote about what happened on social media. I wish I knew her color. 
like it's not relative to the story. This is unacceptable and don't really understand the concept of this project, Pierce told NBC uh, Boston. And uh, Why did you do that, Terry? I don't know. I thought I was teaching the kids. Why did you do that, Terry? I was teaching the kids. They would have No, they wouldn't have found the black faces. <laughs> they were all over the place. Kids posted an apology on... I see kids, that's the school, posted an apology on Facebook, but that apology drew criticism. <laughs> I can't wait to get off this fucking... <laughs> yep. The apology claimed that the school's leaders were hearing of protests happening at the center that will be uh, put the children and staff at risk. So they closed... Look, I don't even understand what... Were they getting threats from white people or black... I, I don't even understand. I can't even... So they close the school because that's what people do when they're chicken shit. They avoid confrontation, in my opinion. <laughs> it's not why they close a school. You're lying. And you're a piece of shit. Hey, fucking easy. Uh, the school also posted an apology. Jesus. Anywhere they didn't put one? The school also made the kids go to a black cemetery and apologize to the dead people. But the school also posted an apology on its door which said, to celebrate, I'm quoting, Black History Month, a teacher in toddler classroom at IC Kids planned and carried out an activity that involved black mass, black face. One of the parents brought it to our attention and was offended, which is enough to shut down the school. The teacher apologized to the parent. And that should be the end of it. The statement said that the teacher was reprimanded and admitted that the wording of Facebook apology was not the best statement. Oh, my God. Does anybody stand up and go, shut the fuck up? I apologize. So we apologized. <laughs> Is this a parody on... How many times have I mentioned apologize in this? <laughs> so they apologized to the Puerto Ricans who <laughs> discovered Florida. And then they went to a kid's cancer hospital and apologized to, the, to every and anyone this may have offended. Oh, my God. If you knew Newton Mass, this makes perfect sense. A um, couple people from Newton Mass, by the way, Louis C.K., Joe Rogan. Um, I know Louis grew up on the shit side of town. <laughs> He's fucking... Uh, uh, that statement said that uh, the teacher who conducted the activity has since been released from her employment at IC. Oh, that's, that's great. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. You're fired. So it doesn't matter the intent. Do you really think that white woman in 2022 teaching little kids of all colors, you really think she was mocking? You see how it doesn't matter? Like the N-word doesn't matter the context. You're not supposed to. So why don't we just make a law? White people... Don't, don't even address black culture. Then they'll complain. You're ignoring a if, if, fucking, I, how much time I've wasted in my life. I was just thinking about this. For the last 50 years, it's been tolerance as far as minorities, gays. Tra look, look where it's got us. Anybody, do you ever check your work the last 40 years and go, oh, this approach isn't working. This is white straight men have just kept their mouth shut the last 40 years and, and not even, shouldn't be blamed for half the fucking, and look where it's got us. Never been more divided. So stick your fucking tolerance up your ass. The fucking gay, remember the gay community? Ah, oh. and conservatives go, well, yeah, you want to have, say, and, and later on, you know, they say slippery slope. You'll want to marry a dog. <laughs> Here we are. Same with race and shit. Here we are, pointing at a guy's dick and saying, my name's Lisa today. Slippery slope, covered in jizz. Good night, everybody. All right, that's it. I'm fucking fed up. And I'm sweating. Check it out. <laughs> it's my fourth cup of coffee. I'm grinding my teeth. Face filled up. I, I look nice and skinny when I woke up today. You know what that is? It's dehydration. I've told you guys this. And if you drink two sips of liquid when you're dehydrated... Especially when you're on TV. Your face grabs it, holds it. Your body's dehydrated. It holds the water. I learned that when I was a model back in uh, Pakistan. <laughs> what? <laughs> you mean you were a T-boy. I was a T-boy. And I'm guessing that's not good. <laughs> Dallas knows that culture well. T-boy. That's a guy. By the way, that's big in that culture, right? Kid bucking. Young boys just like Snatch. Man Boy Thursday. 
Man Boy Thursday. <laughs> Don't they have that at Applebee's? It's a special. Listen to him, Dallas. He's seen it all. Fucking guys lived an interesting life. All right, I gotta go. I gotta take a dump. I uh, <laughs> just kidding. La la la, mama. 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 All right, kids, don't forget, uh, I already told you, comicsjim.com, ba uh, cameo.com. You want me to roast a friend or relative, go to cameo.com. It's fun. I make a recording, minute or two on my phone. We really zing the shit out of them. <laughs> you guys think it, I'll say it very welcome. See you back here tomorrow. Take care, everybody.